come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. Hey, we're back and we're working on our deck again. And we're going to talk railings. But first, make sure you subscribe, click that bell, and uh, leave a message below because we always like to hear from you. Even if you're putting some VDMB something or other, I don't know what that one was. Somebody keeps posting some weird letters in there. So um, anyway, let's get started with this. On the railings, right. uh, we have a minimum height from our deck to the top of the rail, and that is what, Rich? Uh, 36 to 42 inches. Right. Oh, there we go. Look oh, at that. Hey. Nice job there, there Sonar. Where'd you find that picture? Yeah. Um, you know, yes. it's, it's around the it's, internet. Wow. Just thing. pop right. that thing. Can Make you just, us like, disappear go and pop that thing up front. There, there you we go. go. <laughs> okay. So, um, if it, and then if that deck is more than 30 inches off the grade, it needs to be 36 inches tall, right? Yeah. Okay. And then. Yeah. And it's typically balconies are where you have 42 inch. Right. Commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. commercial uh, applications and um, I also was finding out that internationally uh, like in Canada if you're over 60 inches it needs to be 42 even in residential okay so if you're so that's the thing you know we said that in the in the beginning when we talked about doing the deck layout and so on was go visit your local municipalities building department and you know most of them actually have a cheat sheet for like decks this. and garages for small stuff and they'll have something like that where they'll hand you and tell you, okay, this is what we require. So, you know, we're going to give you some pretty good basics here, but, you know, always check with your municipality because it does vary. There's no such thing as an international residential code, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> IRC might have a book out there with a date on it, but right. it doesn't work from town to town, right. state it, to state. You yeah, know, it, it's brutal. You just don't know what what code the municipality is following. It, they could be following a 19 or a 22. You, you don't. You just don't know. Yeah. You yeah. Don't know. So. Uh, okay. So let's go back to the picture yeah. and let's talk about that. So, a couple of key things. One, your rail height. You know, for your your top rail. So it's 36 inch minimum. But the bigger one is going to be those balusters. Yep. Uh, they have what they call the four inch sphere rule. So you cannot. Some inspectors actually drive around. They have a four inch diameter plastic ball. And if they can pass it through there, they will fail you. Yes. So the key is to get them pretty much at three and seven eighths. You know what I mean? Don't go at four, go at three and seven eighths, especially if you're using treated lumber, because when it shrinks, it goes to four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, so, and the same thing, actually that picture, bring that up again. Okay, just leave it up. It says the so shoe good. rail, it says the shoe rail, the bottom yep. rail. Yep. It says five inch above floor max. Yeah, I think that's four, isn't it? It's four, because that's exactly what they do this for is babies' heads. Yes. So, yes, I would never have that above four inches. So yeah. that might be a typo. I don't know, but uh, wouldn't want to do that. No. The other thing is our lateral bracing for a deck. Uh -huh. um, when we design a deck rail, it's designed so that if you're on the deck and you fall into the rail, that the rail can't fail, and they go about 250 pounds lateral load. So that's just like me leaning against it because I'm pretty getting close to that. Um, <laughs> I need one more but, biscuit and I'm over. Yeah, I'm about a biscuit off. Yeah, but what we were talking about it was the balusters. You know, for years we'd put two two by four rails between the posts and then we'd screw two by twos to the outside of those two by fours. Correct. And that's becoming kind of a no no now. Yes. Now they want the rails or the balusters to be on the inside of that rail so that if I was to fall against that baluster, it wouldn't just blow off that rail and I'd go flying over. I'd have to take out the whole rail. Correct. So when you're designing that, it may be better to uh, sandwich it between two two by fours or whatever your bottom shoe rail is going to be. And we've got a couple of pictures. We'll go over that too. Yes. And then between the posts, a maximum of, of 10 foot six between your posts and I don't I rarely go past six or seven feet between posts I don't know about you but no about the same because you really can't find to 10 foot six you'd have to get a 12 foot two by right and you're not going to find good clean 12 foot two bys but you can always find good clean eight footers yep so we you know what I mean we would max it and say eight might be the max just because I could get good boards Correct. But no, I wouldn't go 10-6 either. Yeah, but it's nice that that's your max. That's good. That's, yeah, 
you know, you got some space. Exactly. So in, um, in the United States, it is a four inch shoe rail max. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Code. You're welcome. <laughs> so you're so Ron lifted this off the internet from Canada. Yeah, yeah, it must be. I don't know where it came from. Because I thought it was four too, and then we started yeah, looking Canada at it. Canada's four as well. Oh, Canada's four as well. Okay. There All we right, go. So it's a typo. Yep. So disregard that lower shoe rail max of five inch. It is four inch. Correct. Unless they're measuring to the top, it almost looks like he's measuring to the top, which would then, if it's a two by, it'd be in, yeah. only be three and a half off the deck, and then it would be legal. Yep, there you go. That could be. So. Okay. Yeah. Next. Any way you can fight it. Next. Let's see. So there, there's a, an example of an incorrect installation of the balusters. Here's where. Which is how we've done them right. for 20 years. Yeah, if not longer. So there's your two right. by four top, two by four bottom four inches off the deck, and then you just go along and you make a block. Find your centers and, yeah, find your centers and start putting your balusters up. Yep. So this is what we're talking about, though. That's how we've done decks for 20 or 30 years. Yep. But it's no longer going to be acceptable by code, so you're going to want to put those rails on, sandwich those balusters inside right. and out. So, you, so it's more lumber, but more strength. So you could do this, and then once you're done, take the other piece and smack it over the top of it and then shoot that in, and now you've got that tightened up and you don't have to worry about, mm -hmm. uh, about that code issue. Which isn't a bad look. The downside is, is that's where you start ending up with bees and hornets and stuff because they like those little pockets. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's, I, I think you're better off going with a plowed molding where you've got, you know, a U-channel where you can actually set them in. Yeah. So I guess this is going to change the way we build decks. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, next we've got, oh, our grab oh. rails. Because yeah, these are Yeah, it's not to legal. be confused with the, the cap rail yep. on your ballast, on your deck. Yep, you cannot do that. You need a, an actual <laughs> grasp, a grasp rail on top of your, your uh, guard rail. So uh, the other thing is that you have to return your ends. Here, let me move out of the way. So you have to return your ends back in so that that way... Yes. If you're walking up with a jacket or something, your pocket can't get caught on it. You, you're, you know, when you're carrying your purse up, it doesn't go through there. Um, things like that. That way, you just it straps and things can't get caught on that as you go up there. And it has to be all your ends have to be closed like that. So you get mm -hmm. to the top, same thing. Or it has to turn the corner and can continue on on landings and stuff like that. And I think we got a shot of that later. Yeah, so what they tell you is that it needs to be a continuous handrail so that you do not have to take your hand off the rail at any point to go to the next flight or to turn a landing. It has to be continuous. So these are all things that are, these are newer codes for the most part. I mean, it could be 10 years on that where we actually started the grab rail, but then the returns, that's more like five years, yep. you know. So keep in mind that anybody can, ask for a code to be changed or updated. So with that in mind, it means somebody got caught on that thing, got hung up, damn near killed themselves. So yep. I mean, all these codes change because of something. Sure. Something happened. It's not just some guy goes, hey, how about this? Right. So <laughs> let's make it harder for the carpenter. <laughs> right. <laughs> so in so, a lot of villages, like I said, uh, you know, I worked in a northwest suburb and they were enforcing that yep. years ago. Yep. So. And a lot of municipalities are, and it's on decks too. So th this is interior also. You can't have you mm -hmm. can't have that inside anymore either. So they all right. have to be returned back to the wall. So yep. another shot of it, another example. Oh, here you go. We're going to go to Mr. Code behind the mic over there. Hey. All right, <laughs> yeah. Blow this up now. Here's here's a, what minimums we need. Go ahead. Okay, we're going to start right to left. Okay. We have uh, the handrail has to be. Uh, one and one quarter to one and a half. Okay. That's the thickness of each one of these actual handrails here. Correct. And then it has to be one and one half away from the wall. Correct. Correct. So that, and it has to be graspable. You cannot, if you look in that bottom left corner there, you can see how the fingers wrap around that. You need that finger rail so that it can be, right. so that you can grab onto it. If that was actually right, just you can't square, just use square stock anymore. Nope. Square stock does not count. So you need to be able to wrap your fingers around that that grasp rail when when it's once it's installed. And it could be a groove. You could have a two by four 
and just do a plowed groove on the inside so there's something for your fingers to, to fall just into. Just route it. Correct. You could do something like that if you if you really wanted that squared squared off look. So. Well, and that's the middle picture on the top is kind of like that. Similar. I mean, that Correct. would be kind of what you'd do. That's two by four plowed and then, you know, routed, and right. that would be legal. Yep. There you go. So that's the grass rail that's, that's required. And um, you, you'll get dinged on that if you don't watch it when you call for inspection, because they will call you out on it. It's, it's mm -hmm. fairly common now. So well, that's what they're out there for. Yep. <laughs> that's what they're there for. Okay. Yes, life safety. Next up. There you go. So there's the whole package put together. You've got the, the, the regular guardrail with a, mm -hmm. with a five quarter by six cap doesn't count as a as a grasp rail because as we know we can't go over what is it there sonar Inch, one and one and a, a half. quarter one and a half one and a half so so now you need this with the return and you can see up here it turns the corner and continues on up the rail so it's it's mm -hmm. continuous you don't need it on both sides you just need it on one side or the other that that is correct it only is required to be on one side so and you can see here they've got <clears throat> this doubled up with a rail inside and out so the balusters are in, encapsulated and, and, mm -hmm. and sandwiched on both sides. So it gives you the full picture of that rail going up the stairs and uh, as mm -hmm. per code. And it looks like four inches all around. Yeah, it is. Four inch spacing. Correct. So uh, what kind of materials can we use there, Rich? Anything your little heart can afford. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Obstacle stick, I mean, most you know. most of the time we we just go with the two by two balusters, you know, especially on a treated or cedar deck. Right. It's really the most cost effective. Um, and actually, that picture is really good because we talked about decking, and you know, and nothing's more beautiful than a new cedar deck. Right. But the cedar just grays out, and becomes a hassle. So using a composite deck like they did here, using that decking, but then doing the cedar on the railings. Uh huh is actually great because the cedar and the railings because it's not in that same weather path and sun path it'll stay like that for quite some time so that takes a lot less maintenance so that combination there is really nice yep it's a good look now, if you want something a little fancier a little more color there you go there you go so i mean this is so a we've, timber tech one mm -hmm. and i've used uh like Evergreen, Epoch Evergreen, which I don't even know if they're still around, but they have a railing system similar to that. And they're a composite railing system, and they do last a long time with no maintenance. I mean, the paint doesn't chalk. They don't fade. Yep. I mean, I they're not cheap, don't get me wrong. Right. But they're worth the money because once it's done, yeah, you're not, it's done. You're not screwing you're with You're not going to have to mess with it. And those caps are removable. They actually, you can buy speakers and lights for the caps. Yep. Um, the bases cover up your cuts. So, you know, <laughs> they, it really does make for a great finish. Yep. Because a lot of those actually just slide over your 4x4. Four four. Right. So your 4x4 four is on there. That's a sleeve just slides over it, and you can finish finish it all off. Ties together yep. really nice. Um, and you don't, there's no painting, no maintenance. And roughly, we figure it's going to be at least twice as much to put something like this up than the standard ones we were showing before. Just just in material. Labor's labor. It's going to be about the same to install either one. Yeah. But but I mean that is maintenance free. I mean that yes. you will not have to be playing with year after year or every two years or every three. So right. and you it's got definitely a, a way to go. You got the Timber Tech decking, railing system, and then this, the balusters are just three quarter or one inch pipe that's just in aluminum set. powder it's, coat. Yeah. So, and they're powder coated, so they're not going to start rusting. And yeah, no, it's a great system. So it, that's a that's a great look, and that's a that obviously obviously is an upgrade. So uh, next up is there you go uh, the cable. One of our favorites. So the cable rail. And, and what were you saying about this? You just, you can set these well, posts the, any way you want, willy nilly. <laughs> yeah. No, when you set your post, they have to be super tight. It cannot, you know, you may need to sandwich them in the joists because as you tighten those cables, it just pulls your posts. Yep. So, you know, your posts have to be very well secured uh, or even run down into the ground. Correct. You know, just make it tight as you can because, like I said, as you tension those cables, it just starts pulling everything in. So, right. 
And, and when you're setting these posts, you're going to go down, you're going to tie them into the floor joist, and you're going to box them out. So you're making a, almost a pocket for those to slide into, and then you're going to through bolt those, you know, with, with mm -hmm. carriage bolts. So they get secured in there pretty tight. Uh, you just don't nail them in or hack half of it off and just throw some nails right. in the side of it anymore. Now, and, and again, as nice as those are, check with your municipality. Not everybody allows them. Uh, they, you know, the whole idea of a balustrade is so that your kids don't get caught. Mm -hmm. Well, that looks like a challenge. Oh, yeah. You know, let's climb the cables. Right. And then so, see if we can walk the cap, you know, the top here and see how yeah. far we can walk around the deck exactly. without falling off. You get a little Jimmy on yeah. the top rope. Yeah. Just go. <laughs> That's it. Oh, man. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, check with your municipality, your building department, and make sure you can do that. Yeah, before <laughs> they're you cool looking. They stuff. really are. Yes. Yeah. Again, more and expensive. And not cheap either. Yeah, but if they allow it, it's a it's a good look. So there's mm -hmm. another expansive look at it and how you can run them all the way around. It's really a nice clean look. Yeah. I mean, see. See. Look at that. And, and there would be nothing to worry about there because it only looks like it's about a 50 foot fall. So. Yeah. <laughs> You can bounce real nice off of that. If you got off of this end here, you could do a nice <laughs> swan dive off the end of that. Oh, right down the hill. Yeah. You're really going to regret it for so long. <laughs> yeah, but if it's during the winter and that's full of snow, then you could just be sledding right off the corner, right on down that hill. Yeah. There we go. So, and then this is very cool. We've done a couple of these. It's nothing. Yes. <laughs> right. It's, it's devoid of Tempered any. glass panels. Yes. So make sure you, what'd you say they were? What kind of glass? One quarter inch tempered glass. Tempered glass. There you go. That's the key. So you measure all these spaces, and then you go to your glass guy, and you order them up, and then they ship them out to you, and you slide them into place. Yeah. So you want to route the, the, the four by fours, you know, your posts. You route the, the top and bottom caps so that you have something to set the glass in. Yep. Um, and believe it or not, that's it's not cheap, but it's fairly inexpensive glass is not an expensive product even today yes uh and my glass supplier down here it's 10 day turnaround yeah you know so you're not talking like a big deal i mean i gotta get everything built and framed and all your pieces cut so that you can get all accurate measurements right but then it's 10 days to get the glass to, to wrap the job up that's not bad no no and so that's a nice clean open look and if you wanted to pre-order this stuff, then you could do the next one here that we've got. So there, you're going to pre-order all those pieces of glass, and mm -hmm. you just order a bunch of them up. You got to make sure you keep your four-inch spacing, and you know it's done. I'm nervous about this that that's not going to hold 250 pounds falling against it. But you seem to think I, it'll work. It goes it goes back to I think it really goes back to what are they actually testing the 250 pounds against? Is it against your railing or is it against your balustrade? Right. And it seems to me that the code is shifting because, again, that was just a recent article about the changes in the code in the 2021. Right. And that's what they were talking about was the balusters and how you mount them. Well, I'm not sure strips of tempered glass are going to be strong enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if you fell right into the middle of this, you know, in yeah. a drunken stupor and fell against that, the glass, I just think that glass is going to break. But, I mean, who knows? It may hold hey, it. This will that's what we have Underwriters Laboratory for. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So now you got to order the glass, and it has to have the UL stamp on it that it's, it's rated for a baluster system. No, don't get them going on that one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Things are hard enough. <laughs> so, the, so those are your, your, your bits and pieces on your railings and a yep. little bit of uh, some options that you've got out there. And Yeah, it gets you, get you that, started again. I can't say this enough. Make sure you go to your municipality and check with them. Ask them if there's any quirky things. If you want to do something special like the cable or the glass, make sure they're going to allow, allow you to do that before you get started yeah. on it, before you go ordering all the materials. So right. uh, that's all going to be in our very first episode of all this decking stuff. And that's in your setup, your layout, and your planning of this deck. That's where you're going to be verifying all of this stuff. So... Yes. Uh, I think until uh, next time, what's our, our next one? I think we're going to be doing lighting, deck lighting, and, and that'll be the end of the series on how to build a deck. So uh, make mm -hmm. sure you, you tune in for the next episode when we drop that. I, mean, and, I, thought, I thought we had recipes. I thought that was the last barbecue recipes and, bar beer, and, and, and beer suggestions. I thought that was the Smoking end of Smoking times. <laughs> 
how to select your smoker. <laughs> there that, you go. There you go. Okay, yeah. All right, cool. So do you want an egg or what do you want? What, what do you want? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I don't know. It'd have to be the egg. But where are you going to put it? Oh, on my new deck. See? <laughs> See? There you go. There it is. All right, so until next time. Keep it square, keep it square, square, square level. level. There you go. All right, we're out of here. That almost sounded like it worked. Yeah. I still sound backwards. Do you think? That's because it's three Tell years me. of saying it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> or longer. <laughs> longer. Right? Yeah.